Welcome back to the All Turtles Podcast, a show about the future of work, the future of health, and entrepreneurs building the future with tech like AI. I'm John C. Fuentes, co-founder of All Turtles. Today, I'm interviewing Artie Aryanpour. Artie is the founder and CEO of Seekster, a healthcare solution that synthesizes data from health records, like patient data at a hospital, and continuous monitoring from sources like consumer genomic records and wearables data. He's here to talk about how Seekster is helping to pioneer the future of health. I'm here with Artie Aryanpour, and he's the founder and CEO of Seekster, which is a, a SaaS healthcare solution that syncs electronic health data, genetic data, and continuous monitoring data from different sources. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Hi, John. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in. We really appreciate uh, the conversation. So for our listeners, can you explain what Seekster does? Yeah, so we put the person at the center of healthcare, disrupting all their episodic EHR, as you mentioned, combining it with their baseline genetic DNA data, as well as adding their continuous monitoring and wearable or medical device data and allowing them to share that data on their terms. We created the mint.com of health data, basically, but it's actually better than mint. So there's all these new places for health data metrics or data to exist. I can see a watch on your wrist that presumably is counting some numbers of some things. Uh, And this is a relatively new phenomenon, like the last, I don't know, 10 years where people are wearing things that are producing data or, but this is a, this is kind of a long spanning problem. Like why, like what is the state of the state? What are the, what are the containers now of data at um, hospitals or doctor's offices? Like why is it so, it's, it seems like such an obvious problem and Yet no one's really figured it out to this point. Yeah, that that obvious problem that, you know, we've been very fortunate to accidentally fall upon with the solution is interoperability. Right. Because one data source doesn't talk to another data source. So interoperability exists, obviously, in our medical system and our our healthcare system is very fragmented because one Epic system doesn't talk to a Cerner system, one Cerner system doesn't talk to an Allscript system, a McKesson system, an eClinical work system, et cetera. And not only that, there's various different uh, versions of electronic healthcare providers, right? So these are called EMRs or EMRs EHRs? Or EHRs, so, exactly. So the, the state, there's a few large companies that do this and they, yep. all, they all do it like in slightly different ways. And, and even those companies, for example, if you take UCSD and UCSF, they don't talk to one another, even though they're on the same, you know, type of uh, a company, Epic, right. but they're in different versions. Okay. <laughs> right. So that's number one. Number two, uh, we, we have lots of uh, consumer genetic testing that's been done from 23andMe, from Ancestry DNA, Family Tree DNA, or, you know, a color genomics for hereditary um, breast and ovarian cancer testing. And all of this data is being siloed within, you know, those companies as well, even though it's your data. And then if you go back to what you're saying about the wearables, the wearables is really new. And so is the DNA in the past, you know, 10 years, that's when DNA really started taking off. And the wearables really started taking off in the last, let's say three or four years or so. And so those have been huge tailwinds, but we've all had medical data in disparate sources somewhere. And we have to find a way to collect that data And we have to find a way to control that data. We have to find a way to share that data. And the best person to do that is you. So what are like, what are the sticky problems and even being able to collect that stuff, like and get it into one place? Like what I'm not asking you to to unveil what's under your company and what it all does (laughs) technically, but like, what's like, why is this such a big problem? It just seems so, it seems so simple. It's like such an easily described problem, but no one can figure it out. And those are the best problems to solve. <laughs> and those are the biggest problems to yeah. solve in our world, right? And um, that's where the accident kind of comes. We just wanted to make a dashboard right. to be able to see our net health, as I call it. Uh-huh. How do you become the CEO of your own health, right? We all want to do that in some fashion or form. Even if you're a healthy individual, um, if you don't care about your health, you can be sure that you care about 
a loved one's health, like sure. your mother with breast cancer, your grandmother with Alzheimer's, or whatever the situation is. So this 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 problem of interoperability hits home, and a lot of health happens at home. And now, since we have devices and we have access to so many d- different types of technology, all that data that is being collected is being collected at various different places. So this problem is actually ballooning. Right. And the reason why it was never solved was because we are taking the approach from, you know, provider to provider, payer to payer, right. company to company. We never took a person centric or patient centric approach. And so at Seekster, as I say, everyone is seeking health data. It doesn't matter if you're a payer, a provider, a pharmaceutical company, or a parent or any person. We are all seeking health data. And so when you put the person at the center of all that information, you empower them to collect, own, and share that data. And that's where our person-centric or patient-centric interoperability technology fits. So is this a consumer product or how do you access Seekster? Like what, what, can, what do you do? Yeah, so I think that, that's a fantastic question. The dream here was to create something to empower 7.7 billion people on our little spaceship here called Earth to be able to collect, own, and share all their data. And uh, there's lots of things that you can do if you enable that. However, there's a lot of problems within how do you actually market to folks? How much money do you have to spend for the awareness and all that other good you know, jazz? Uh, more importantly, we fell off a business model that's SaaS where a large enterprise would actually license our technology, and then we'd be able to deploy our scalable solution as a SaaS-based model for that enterprise to empower their members, their patients, their users, right? And that's where Seekster is really special, and we've figured out the business model, not just the technology. And so the commercialization is, is really interesting. And just, you know, two weeks ago, we had a major validation point with um, a major pharmaceutical company invest in Seekster, and that was Takeda Pharmaceuticals. Oh, congrats. So you raised a round. Uh, so you have a team of people working on this? Yeah, we have, um, you know, 20 plus folks uh, that have been part of Seekster since 2016. Uh, we're in hyper growth phase. Um, we got some growing pains. We got too much too many requests, I guess you could say, ever since some news has been breaking out about sure. our solution. And uh, we're, we're really interested in how we can empower people with their health data. But more importantly, how do we change healthcare? So I'm, I'm still a little, I wonder if you could clarify some of the commercial bits. Uh, so do you sell this to like hospitals, to, to EMRs, to software providers, to, or to companies that offer healthcare to their employees? Like what's the... Yeah, there's there's really five big segments that are interested in our technology. Let's start with pharmaceuticals. Pharma is very interested because of how we can empower uh, their uh, participants in trials to collect and own and share the data. And we can be a patient engagement platform for pharma. And we can fast track clinical trials. We can get the right data. We can hit on real world evidence and real world data and all these things that pharma is really interested in Mm -hmm. within their clinical trial processes. Sure. Um, Payers are very interested because we can boost the net promoter scores and uh, the Medicare Advantage group has a lot of interest, obviously, in something with Seekster where it would be a member engagement tool to keeping the population more healthy, Sure, right? Um, We can reduce medical loss ratios for payers, so they're very interested in this. And then providers are very interested in this because let's take a patient who has cancer as an example. If you or I have cancer, the first thing that a tertiary care center provider does is ask about your family history right. and wanting all your health data in one place. It takes them sometimes months to collect that. And health data can save a life if you can collect it fast enough. Sure. So we solve a major pain point there. And then lastly, consumer brands, as you know, the big consumer brands um, that are interested in getting in health or some who are already in health but don't have innovative technologies are calling us seeing how can we utilize this for you know millions of people. Okay, so this is live in the field. People are using this product now. Are there any 
stories are kind of interesting. Like here's, you know, here's what someone did by by combining this like genetic information. Like for, to me, it's a little bit disparate, like genetic information, you know, your steps and your physical activity and like your blood work over years. Um, I can I can like try and get creative and imagine how that can be combined in ways that are helpful to me to like know on a regular basis. But do you have any any kind of like hard use cases like here's, you know, this guy is using Seekster and like this is what he found and changed his life? Yeah, there's 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 so many stories. We probably won't have time to, yeah. to cover them. But two big stories. Just last week, CBS covered Seekster and a very big story on a stage four cancer patient's journey on how he had multiple health records at MD Anderson and uh, Sutter Health and Stanford and Marin County and um, you know UCSF and various different sure. institutions. And the caregiver, the wife, couldn't get all the data in one place. And Seekster was the only platform was able to solve that big problem for them because before then she would be carrying a huge binder of results and you know your audience can uh, google seekster space cbs in in google and hit news and you'll find it or go to our website seekster.com and you can see that another big example is maybe some of your uh, uh listeners here that are um well aware of the healthcare or digital health space, know of a very prominent person called Dr. Eric Topol. He was actually the first consumer and physician to publicly share his data in 2018 when we came out of stealth. And what he said publicly on Twitter is, first time I've been able to get my medical data from 1985 to present that's a lot of longitudinal data, right? Right, right? Four health systems at Scripps Health, at UCSD Health, at Cleveland Clinic, at University of Michigan, at 23andMe, oh, sorry, plus 23andMe, the DNA data, right. plus my Fitbits, plus my Fitness Pal uh, data with labs from different systems all connected uh, through Seekster, trying it less than 24 hours, step in the right direction. Cool. And so that's such a huge example of not only the diverse set of data that Seekster can seek out for the individual and harmonize and standardize all this data in one place, but more importantly, how fast and rapidly we can aggregate that data for the individual because we put you in control of it. This, uh, I mean, it kind of, has the smell of like a pretty personal product. Is there a story here? Like why, like why did you decide to work on this? Yeah. So I came from DNA sequencing background, um, built a, you know, very large company before this and, uh, realized that a lot of data was being siloed and I was part of that. And, um, my mom's a breast cancer survivor. My dad is a colon cancer survivor where my team and I actually used the platform to aggregate his health data and share it with six different pathologists and get him into care a lot faster. Wow. Um, so there is a personal story there. And more importantly, I came up with the multi-generational health record four years ago when my grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And unfortunately, I'm the poster child of health data. Right. So both my maternal and paternal grandmothers have passed away. No reason to be sorry. It's all part of, you know, life. Sure. Um, due to AD, Alzheimer's disease. And so my grandma lives within the matrix. My mom was my inspiration in getting into, you know, um, research and and sequencing early on, you know, in my teens. And then, um, you know, my dad, you know, surviving colon cancer and us celebrating his 70th birthday just a couple of months ago is just proof that health data is medicine. Yeah. Maybe why is this product only possible today? Like what's the state of the state that changed or became available or? Yeah, there's there's two main factors there. Uh, number one, a lot of people have tried to solve this problem, but they've taken the wrong approach. Number one, number two, what we did differently is we worked on the dirty work that no one has actually cracked. There's a lot of dirty engineering when you're dealing with health data. And, you know, we put together a phenomenal team that had done it before mm -hmm. and, and, and disrupted the genomics industry and took next gen sequencing to the clinic and, and had a lot of experience with millions of sample types and things like that. And so that engineering team 
followed me to this venture for Seekster. And that's where the luck was. The fact that we had some experience, but at the same time, we didn't know how messy with medical data was, which is entirely different than genomic data or wearable data. Another um, factor is I think we were too early. Like I said, we were in stealth for three years. Mm -hmm. I founded the company um, in 2016. It took us three years to come out of stealth. And uh, part of the reason is I didn't want to come out of stealth until we had nationwide coverage. Seekster has nationwide coverage. We have, you know, almost 4,000 hospitals integrated with the, in this, in the system, over 150,000 small office, uh, small doctor offices and medical clinics. And, um, the tailwinds have just been getting stronger. I envisioned the tailwinds years ago, but you know, it took longer than anticipated for those tailwinds to hit and they're hitting front and center now. And next week at Hims in Orlando, you know, there's rumors that CMS ONC is going to drop the big rules that even push this in a whole nother stratosphere. Is, is this a conference? What's happening next week? Yeah. Hims is the biggest health IT conference. Okay. And actually, um, you know, Pre president Donald Trump is actually, as of yesterday, uh, picked as the main speaker on interoperability. Interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> you tell me, you know, I think everyone is kind of interested, you know, it doesn't matter if you're red, white, or blue, yeah. um, <laughs> what your political side is. This is a big problem. It, do it doesn't matter, you know, what, what race you are. It doesn't matter what country you're from. It doesn't matter what city you live in, um, or your political party. At the end of the day, we all care about health data. Yeah, of course. Now, what's what's with the name? How'd you come up with it? What's what's That's the story? so funny. So, um, I I used to be a big Napster user. Okay, <laughs> and so I would bring you know all my music uh -huh. in some fashion away. It was a good life hack. And being a DNA sequencing guy, I literally went on a run one day. I come back from the run, and I'm watching the Italian Job. And the real Napster was in that movie. If you remember, he right. was like talking about I'm the real Napster. Right, right. So I at the time I was thinking of company names. And, um, I wrote down Seekster. I went to godaddy.com, bought Seekster.com for $9.99. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's simple. Yeah. That's great. And, and, and what's great about it is it's got, it's, it's evolved because it's not about just sequencing. It's about seeking and, um, it's about seeking health data. And that's, what's really key. Um, I'm curious about this, um, this comparison to Mint and products like it, like there's all sorts of sort of tracking devices for people to understand, you know, what they're spending money on on a day-to-day -day basis and kind of projecting maybe their more long-term financial health outlook and, and all these different products and services to, you know, that are offered to improve that. So I really like that analogy, but like people are still the same and like, you know, people are in worse debt now than we were 10 years ago <laughs> and the behaviors haven't changed all that much. How do you envision just have being able to, I'm using my hands a lot, but to be able to see this, this health data, like how do you envision people making decisions that improve their health outcomes? Or is this more like, is the real value to providers and being able to see this and be able to better assess and better prescribe or, you know, better give direction to what someone should do with their health? Yeah, great question. So, you know, I think we have to take a step back and understand why we wanted to make it better than mint.com or personal capital or right. any of those financial types of um, uh, platforms. Number one, those platforms were great because it gave a foundation for something new, but they also had a lot of holes. And so we, we focused on the gaps and the holes and how we can fill it up because for healthcare data, it's way different than, you know, your, your bank account data or your student loans data, right? Of course, yeah. Not only that, it's way more sophisticated. It's way more fragmented. It's very easy to pull in Wells Fargo and Bank of America data. It's, it's an Excel file, right? Right, right. As an example, I'm just showing yeah. it's a number. But bringing together an Epic data with an Allscripts data and a 23andMe data and a Fitbit data, you're talking a whole new ballgame. And so we had to create a couple tools. And we started with you know, the person and the patients to tell us how they want to see it versus how a lot of these guys that tried it before thought they were smart enough in building what they wanted. 
I didn't build what, or my team didn't build what we wanted or I wanted. Right. We had the vision, but what we did differently is we started with people telling our engineers what to do, not the engineers telling the people. And I think that is a, a huge entrepreneurial lesson that I learned even on accident as well. And um, where it fits for both the person, and this is the beauty of Seekster, is that it does help people and families be more engaged. It does change behaviors. I'll give you an example. Even, even since I bought my own Apple Watch, which isn't Seekster, which doesn't really do much, people say, for your health. Right. If I go track now with my information, last year before I had an Apple Watch and I waited till Series 5 came out to buy it because I always wait until the best generation, sure, I guess yeah. you could say. I'm one of those guys. But, um, you know, I've been taking an average almost 4,000 more steps a month because I monitor it with my Apple Watch plus all my other data. Right. And so that's an example, right? Let's say I'm a bad example. Um, the fact that, you know, chronically ill patients can aggregate their health data and share it with various different providers or physicians is so empowering. And, you know, there's multiple use cases that we can go down, whether it's rare disease, whether it's vaccinations, whether it's, you know, cancer, oncology, and so forth. On the provider or payer or pharma side, we are enabling those enterprises to make better products for us, the people, when you deploy this type of technology. So it's a win, win, win. It's not a win, win. So who wins? The person wins, the the enterprise wins, and the overall process wins. So I call it a win, win, win. Have you invented any new health metrics? Like I'm... I'm I'm trying to think of it from like a personal perspective or like how I would use this dashboard. And it'd be cool to see like, oh, here's when you quit smoking or like here's when you changed your diet substantially or like, oh, here's that new job you took. And like, oh, crap, like looks, look what's happening to your, you know, to these health metrics. Are there like are there new uh, kind of combinations of metrics that you guys are doing that's that's proprietary or like here, here's the Seekster advantage to doing X, Y or Z? Absolutely. So. As you can imagine, once you have all this health data in one place, we've taken three different categories from EHR, medical records, to DNA, genetic data, genomic data, to the wearable, continuous monitoring, medical device data. Those are three huge industries, multi-billion dollar industries alone. And we've consolidated all that in one common form on the data on the back end side. And so when that happens, you can come up with and create amazing features. I'll talk about one sure. as an example. We got a dozen. The health timeline. So just like how you have a Facebook timeline for your photos, that doesn't mean anything. Who cares about that really? Right. Like it's just great, but it doesn't do anything <laughs> for you. But imagine having a health timeline with all of your encounters, when you took your medications, when you had gastrointestinal bleeding, and you know when that colon cancer hit and, and so forth as right. an example. So the health timeline that Seekster, you know, created is brand new and it is very engaging as well as, you know, being able to compare your 23andMe data with, let's say, your mom's ancestry DNA data because so many people are getting consumer genetic testing, but you can't compare the data. And so we created that even on the DNA side as an example. Or if you wanted to overlay in our integrated view, your clinical data with your fitness data, right? And so there's just so much, I guess, geeking out on your data that can happen, (laughs) That's the word that immediately comes to mind. Yeah, so that's what it is. What's really great about Seekster, it's different for John than it is for Jessica, than it is for Artie, than it is for, you know, Amanda or whoever. And that's what's great because it's personalized because your data is personalized. So what's you have a fresh round of funding, you have this committed team, like what's what's next with the company? How, how do you envision this going forward? Yeah, you know, um, I've always thought that we're on to something ginormous, but the tailwinds and the types of folks that are contacting us are on a whole nother level. Yeah. And I'm not talking about, you know, regular people. Um, and I don't mean that by any disregard. I'm just saying that... When you have, you know, a senior officials within the government 
contacting you to see what you have or, you know, billionaires that are interested in interoperability um, and health, you know that you can actually change the world. Yeah. If you get, if you can connect the dots within the funding as good as you connected the dots within the health data. Right. And so we're in hyper growth mode. You're going to see a lot of new announcements from various different customers from us. And we are open to any new suggestions or anyone that's interested in interoperability, healthcare, health tech, innovation. There's a lot of talk out there. And I know we're on a podcast talking about this. The difference with Seekster is we executed it. We have it. Yeah. And everyone in the United States right now can, if we wanted to open it up, access all their health data yeah. and solve this $35 billion plus annual problem called interoperability. That's, that was going to be my next question is, can our listeners, can anyone just kind of go on and and access their health data in some meaningful way right now? So we do give invite codes out on, on special occasions. Okay. We've done it to, you know, thousands of chronically ill folks. Sure. We did it in our alpha study. We did it in our beta study. Like I said, we're not direct to consumer, but we've built a direct to consumer feel. Right. That's that mint.com feel. Yeah. However, um, you know, our business model is SaaS and you would have to get it through you know, your payer, provider. your payer or whatever business entity, maybe it's um, an employer. If you work for Coca-Cola and if we're partnered through Coca-Cola, then sure. you know, that's where it's, it's, it's being offered. However, that being said, being a fan of all turtles and <laughs> it's a, it's a pleasure to be on your guys's podcast here and, um, being a fan of what Phil has done, you know, in his entire career here, John, I would be happy to help your listeners experience this and they can email info at seekster.com and in the subject line, put all turtles request and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Awesome. Thank you. That's great. Uh, well, Artie, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, congratulations on the new funding and getting everything moving there and, you know, wishing you the best. This is a huge problem and I'm hopeful and anxious to kind of see it come to fruition. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled and uh, so grateful to be um, getting the recognition. More importantly, this is much bigger than us. And any way anyone can help us drive this to the next level, I'm completely open for it. So thank you so much. Awesome. And now it's time for a listener question. This one comes in from Julio via email. And Julio says, I am a dentist in Houston, Texas. I have an idea for an AI in precision medicine. I think AI could aid in early diagnosis, prevention, and treatment of several conditions. At this point, all I have is an idea based on informal but extensive research I've been doing in the areas of oral microbiology, precision medicine, artificial intelligence, and blockchain. What would you suggest as my next step? I have never put together a large team, which I consider the most important component of execution, nor have I built a large company. Not sure if I'm at a stage where you can help me or if I should have a co-founder, a team, or a company, or whatever first. Uh, thank you in advance for any guidance and help you can provide. Well, your immediate next step is probably to stop working on blockchain stuff because <laughs> that's almost certainly unnecessary. Um, uh, not to bring up, you know, endless blockchain arguments, but I have still, and now it's been, I don't know, what, 10 years into blockchain and every couple of weeks I <laughs> say, somebody in the world, please show me a use case where blockchain actually makes sense. And it's it's yet to happen. I, 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 <laughs> I hear, it's a, actually good news. It's down. Quite a bit. I used to hear probably a hundred a week, and now I'm down to like one or two a week. So. Blockchain news is definitely down. Yeah. So, uh, so blockchain is probably not part of your of your um, solution. Uh, but uh, in, in terms of everything else, yeah. I mean, uh, you're right. I think AI has huge potential in uh, early diagnosis and prevention, and there's lots of things that that you can do. Uh, and you know, the first step is uh, just to talk to other people. I think that uh, that you think could be useful. Yeah, specifically about your idea. No one's going to steal your idea. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I feel like, I'm not sure if this is, if, if you're couching this, if this is your actual question or not, I may be misreading it, but a lot of, like, first-time entrepreneurs worry about, well, like, should I tell people my idea? What if they steal it? And I always just say, like, look, you're more likely to get eaten by a bear than to have someone steal your idea. And then the bear might steal your idea, but only, like, after eating you, right. which is unlikely. Right. Uh, it's just like, yeah, it, it sometimes happens, but it's so rare. I mean, most people who are useful to you and who are quality, high quality people, like have other things to do rather than stealing your ideas. 
Uh, I mean, I guess it depends on who you talk to. But if you identify someone who you think is going to be valuable in helping you figure this out, then you should talk to them. And um, if you don't talk to anyone, you have a 100% chance of failure. And if you do, you only have a very, very, very tiny chance of them stealing your idea. But I'm not actually sure if that's what you're asking. It's just that I, I get that question a lot from people who, who are like this. Like they have, they have an idea that they kind of describe vaguely because it maybe sounds like they're afraid of talking about it. So, yeah, we're talking about it. Not necessarily publicly, but with... Uh, with advisors, investors, you know, other doctors, people who we think would be would be useful, uh, and then just uh, you know see how you feel about it after you've discussed it with ten people who you really respect, uh, and then uh, uh, if you want to talk, you know, more specifically about that with uh, with any of us, just uh, you know get in touch with email or something, and happy to do a phone call or get coffee or something like that. Cool. Thanks, Julio. Um, any other listener questions? Send us an email. It's hello at all turtles dot com or tweet us at at all turtles co. This podcast is a production of the All Turtles Worldwide Media Empire. We recorded this episode in the world-class Donatello Studios in San Francisco, California. Thanks to Artie for joining us this episode. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future episodes, send us an email to hello at all-turtles.com. Marie reads every message. Thanks to everyone who made this episode possible, including Jim Metzendorf for editing, Marie McCoy-Thompson for producing, Chris Blug for his audio expertise, Micah Rivera for our artwork, and Matt Ammerman for our theme music. On behalf of Jessica Collier, Phil Libin, and yours truly, John C. Fuentes, and the rest of the All Turtles team, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.